Hi everyone, Nick here, welcome back. Planning your retirement income strategy is difficult. You want to live a comfortable retirement, enjoy the fruits of your labor, and have your portfolio support you if you live longer than average. There are so many factors to consider and a lot of uncertainty. In this video, we're going to focus on the main risks retirees face, sequence of returns risk, inflation risk, and longevity risk. Then we'll look at some different mindsets people have to deal with these risks. Finally, we'll look at some tools we can use to help plan a retirement income strategy. We'll use a simple framework to evaluate different withdrawal amounts and asset allocations. You'll be able to use this framework to evaluate your plan and estimate if you have enough to retire or how much you can safely spend in retirement. First is sequence of returns risk. If you face bad market returns early in retirement, it can be devastating. This is because you'll be spending money selling off some of your portfolio in a down market and won't have as much left to benefit from a recovery. This is much worse than if the market does well earlier in retirement. Even if you have the same overall average return over your retirement, it's generally better to have your good years early in retirement. Second is inflation risk. If you think about your portfolio returns adjusted for inflation, this is very similar to sequence of returns risk. High inflation will likely lower your inflation adjusted returns. Inflation can be just as devastating for retirees, especially those with higher bond allocations, unless they are with inflation adjusted bonds. Third is longevity risk. This is the risk that you live much longer than anticipated. The average life expectancy is currently around 77 years old, but what are the odds that you or your spouse live longer? There is a great tool to help answer this called Longevity Illustrator. In this example, we have a couple at age 65, both in average health. Here are the odds that one or both of them live to certain ages. There is a 62% chance one of them lives until age 90, 33% chance one of them lives until 95, and 11% chance one of them lives until 100. If you're both in excellent health, there's a 73% chance one of you lives until 90, 45% until 95, and 19% until 100. You can look at the data in more detail for yourself in the link below. But this adds a lot of uncertainty to retirement planning. If you retire at age 65, your retirement could be 10 years or it could be more than 30 years. All three of these risks have a lot of uncertainty and will have a significant impact on the success of your retirement income strategy. So what are we to do? Well, there is one simple and often overlooked solution, which is to smash the like button to support free financial education. I produce a lot of free content to help you achieve financial independence. All I ask for in return is that you smash the like button so YouTube will share it with more people. You can also subscribe to get notified of my latest videos. There are a couple schools of thought on how to approach these risks. The first is called a probabilistic approach. That is to use retirement planning software to estimate the probabilities of success of various strategies. This can include how much you withdraw, strategies for adjusting your withdrawals based on market conditions, various asset allocations, how many years you could live, and more. The general idea of these tools is to stress test your strategy against historical data and give you an estimate of the percentage chance of success of your strategy. This is where many people will differ. Some people will be comfortable with a 90% chance of their strategy meeting their needs. They may accept that if they live past 100 or they face a bad sequence of returns, they may run out of money. Others would find this far too risky and prefer a safety first approach. They might buy inflation protected securities to protect against inflation or annuities to protect against longevity risk. People buying these typically seek more assurances of their plan working in the worst case, 
even if it means that average or best case isn't as good. They just aren't as comfortable with the probabilistic approach and try to get some guarantees. The safety-based approach is often not quite as safe as it may seem. Annuities are often pitched as a great way to ensure against longevity risk. However, I think these products often carry more risk than are advertised since they are not inflation adjusted. You might be able to supplement annuities with a stock portfolio to protect against inflation, but the value of the monthly income from an annuity could easily be cut in half or more over a 10 to 30 year retirement. For people in the US, social security is basically an inflation adjusted annuity, but these might be at risk of lowered payouts or higher taxes in the future. I'll have to make a separate video on ways to mitigate these risks, annuities, and social security. I just wanted to point out the different mindsets and how some proposed solutions may not be as good as you think. I personally prefer the probabilistic approach and plan to mostly leverage my asset allocation and withdrawal strategy to mitigate these risks instead of buying specific products. Now that we've discussed the major risks and mindsets to dealing with them, let's look at some tools. The first is called a Monte Carlo simulation. This is a mathematical simulation that estimates the probability of different outcomes in a process that cannot be easily predicted to, due to random variables. This is exactly what we are dealing with for retirement income risk. We have a lot of variables we cannot predict and we want to estimate how well our strategy will work. Monte Carlo simulations have many different applications, even outside finance. They're regularly used to stress test retirement income strategies. The way this works is that you'll create hundreds or thousands of scenarios to test your strategy against. For instance, we might have 40 years of daily price data from major asset classes. If we pick random days from this data and stitch them together, we could generate tens of thousands of different scenarios. This is generally how these simulations are used in finance. Portfolio Visualizer has a free Monte Carlo tool that does this simulation for you with 10,000 scenarios. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a $1 million portfolio and want to draw $40,000 per year to supplement Social Security. In my opinion, we should always use inflation adjustments when running these simulations. Let's say we have a three fund portfolio with 25% US stocks, 15% international stocks, and 60% US bonds. Here are the results. We have the 10th, 25th, 50th, 75th, and 90th percentile, which reflect the distribution of the 10,000 scenarios. Without getting too complicated, the 10th percentile is the 1,000th worst case out of the 10,000 cases. 90% of outcomes will be better, and 10% will be worse. The 50th percentile is the middle, the 90th percentile is the 10th best case out of 100. This shows us the probabilities of how our portfolio will do based on the simulation. In my opinion, the most important number of these is the real portfolio and balance. This is the inflation adjusted portfolio balance. Real accounts for inflation. Nominal ignores inflation. In the 10th percentile, you would have $500,000 left. 50th, 1.42 million, and 90th, 3 million. This is a significant distribution and reflects the uncertainty and risk from the sequence of returns and inflation. Maybe even more important is the percent chance of success. In this scenario, the strategy didn't run out of money in 98.76% of cases over 30 years. To show longevity risk, let's extend this simulation to 40 years. Remember, there's about a 10% chance that you or your spouse could live past 100. Now the chance of success is 94%. For people in the fire community, you might be looking at doing this for 70 years or more. If you extend the simulation to 70 years, this scenario has an 80% success rate. 
I like to take this data and put it in a spreadsheet like this. We have a column representing this scenario of a $1 million portfolio and a 35 year retirement for a couple retiring at age 65. Then I have rows for the age and the probability of one person in the couple will live to that age. In this case, we have the average from Longevity Illustrator with a 33% chance one spouse lives till 95 and 11% to 100. This is for an average health couple. You can use Longevity Illustrator to get this data and add ages 85, 90, or even 100 and 110 if you want. Next, I enter the probability of success for these ages. And then I also put in the median portfolio balance. I'm more concerned about the success rate, but I also want to see how much money I might have when I die. You could adjust this to fit the risks you're most concerned with and the various metrics you're most interested in. Now that we have this, we can run a bunch of different scenarios to compare them. What if we were to withdraw $45,000 per year? Well, the success rate drops to about 95% we live until 95 and 90% for age 100. What if we make the portfolio more aggressive with 60% stocks instead of bonds? Wow, that's surprising. It became worse with about a 92% success rate for age 95 and 89% for age 100. How about asset allocation? What if we take 15% of the bonds and put them in tips? It got even worse with an 84% success rate at age 95 and 77% at 100. Without focusing too much on these specific scenarios or numbers, this is how you can compare them and start to think about how comfortable you are with these types of risks. We're talking about a possible 33% chance of living until age 95 and maybe a 5 to 15% chance of running out of money if we live that long. That's even worse at age 100. You could try different asset allocations, different withdrawal amounts. Just note this isn't an exact science. If you run this again, the numbers will be slightly different. These are estimations using samples of historical data. The future could be different. At the end of the day, the most pressing question is, what chance of success are you comfortable with? Maybe you'd rather live it up, and fall back on your kids or the government if you're unlucky. Maybe you want to leave a large inheritance for your children or charity and want a very high probability of success. Let me know what you're comfortable with in the comments below. Now this is obviously somewhat simple as we used a fixed inflation adjusted withdrawal strategy. Many people would be comfortable with withdrawing less if the market drops or possibly cutting back later in retirement if needed. Most retirees spend less money as they age anyways. This tool has a couple other withdrawal models that you could experiment with. Another tool that you could look at is FI Calc. We can plug in the same $1 million portfolio with $40,000 per year of inflation adjusted withdrawal and 35 year retirement with 45% stocks and 60% bonds. Now this tool shows an 80% success rate. This isn't a Monte Carlo simulation. This tool uses an actual sequences of historical returns. They run one scenario starting at 1920 for 35 years, then 1921 for 35 years, and so on to get 117 simulations. Monte Carlo had 10,000 simulations but they are synthetic samples from historical data. Neither of these tools are foolproof. They are just estimates. If you know of other good tools, please share them in the comments below. You can update the spreadsheet with values from various tools to help you with your strategy. One great thing about FI Calc is it has more withdrawal strategies. A lot of strategies have been created to try to minimize longevity risk, and those can be simulated with FI Calc. They also have some great information on the various withdrawal strategies. I'll probably make another video on these in the future. 
In this video, we've discussed the main risks for retirement income strategies and the mindset some people have, probabilistic versus safety. Then we looked at some tools and how to analyze various retirement income strategies, asset allocations, and how to think about trade-offs. We are dealing with many unknown variables and these are just estimates. But these types of tools are the best we have to help us guide our decisions. If you found this video valuable, make sure to smash the like button and share it with other people. Thanks for watching everyone. Later.